Howdy, I'm Tim Hartman with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, and today we're going to be talking about dormant season pruning of blackberries. So let's just really quickly review uh, some of the reasons that we prune. One of the reasons is to limit the amount of productivity. We don't want too much fruit. Uh, if we have too much fruit, it's going to stress the plant and we're not going to have good size and good quality. We also want to make sure that the plant is not overloaded too much so that it's able to produce new growth, which will produce next year's, next year's fruiting wood. So we're talking about typical flora cane producing blackberries, those that produce on canes that were grown the previous year. So we're looking at a Washita. Washita is a University of Arkansas variety of blackberry that of course does not have thorns, so that's really, really nice to be able to work with. And it produces a crop on the one-year-old uh, flora canes. We're not talking about the primocane fruiting blackberries today. So what you see here, we have quite a few of these uh, flora canes. These were last year's primocanes. They grew vegetatively last year. And now they've gone through the winter time. They've had their chilling. Uh, it is early March here in Texas. And you can see that they've lost most of their leaves, uh, but have not started to break bud yet. We're kind of toward the end of the winter. Uh, they'll start growing here in the next in the next two to four weeks or so. Okay, and so one of the other reasons that we prune is to facilitate management. To facilitate management and also make sure we've got plenty of light coming through. Open up the plant so we have good air movement. That breeze can get through, dry out the foliage. Blackberries uh, are susceptible to quite a few diseases of the fruit and foliage like rust and anthracnose. And if you look right here, we've got probably, I would guess, around a dozen canes or so, which is really too much growth. That's too much production potential. But when these things uh, start growing and push out new foliage, this is just going to be a big mess. Okay, So we want to, to thin out some of these canes so that we can limit the amount of production we're going to have, get some sunlight into here, and also make sure that we've got the plant is able to produce primocanes that will fruit uh, the next year. Okay, all right, so let's look at what we've got. So first thing I want to point out really quickly is that these have been tipped at a height of about 48 inches to produce laterals, okay? So each cane has got several laterals coming out and that uh, just gives us more real estate basically to produce fruiting, uh, fruiting shoots. All right, so let's look at what we've got here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, about a dozen fruiting canes, okay? And depending on the variety, we really only want to end up with about four to six. The smaller the canes are, the more we can leave. If it's a variety like Primark Freedom or Kiowa that has really vigorous ones, we can, we can leave uh, fewer canes. The other thing we want to do is we want to select for canes that are going to be nice and strong. This is a nice, strong cane. It doesn't have a lot of disease on it, a lot of, uh, a lot of lesions from anthracnose, for example. Um, so these are the kind of canes that we're going to target. All right. The other thing we'd like to do is kind of spread out the position of these so they're not too close together. So notice these two are very close together. So the fruiting wood from them are likely going to be close together as well. So again, I'm going to target about four to six canes on this variety. Okay. All right. So we've got one that's kind of far out over here, but uh, not, not too far. It's still, it's still in our area. So I'm going to leave it. I'm going to cut out the one that is right next to it. We can fairly easily pull these out. Kind of caught that one, but that's a, that's a fairly small, uh, weak cane anyway. I'm going to cut these back a little bit shorter to facilitate this process. So we've got two right here. We've got a pretty well positioned cane right here. So I'm going to cut out the one right next to it. Cut it back by about half. And then we can pull the rest out of here, okay? All right, so we've got some that are also, this one's pretty small. We've got a fairly small one here. The other thing we're looking at during this process is looking for disease, okay? So if we've had a lot of anthracnose injury on the, on the, on the canes, um, that's going to inhibit and really affect the uh, plant's ability to carry water and nutrients up. So we want to uh, get rid of any canes that are very diseased or or damaged in other ways. Again, we're trying to kind of spread these canes out. So ultimately, I'm probably going to end up removing somewhere close to about half of the canes that are already here. 
All right, here's a small one back in this area. And remove it. Again, I would not be grabbing these by hand if this was a Kiowa or a Primark 45 or some other thorny variety. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a one additional cane. Notice this, actually we have two back here that are outside of my wire, so I'm going to remove them. Not that we couldn't get them back, back in, but uh, I'm just going to remove them all together, okay? So one thing I didn't point out earlier is that this is kind of um, a hybrid system. It's, it's similar to a two-wire trellis system, but it's also got uh, two wires at each height, kind of spreading this out. So it's kind of a hybrid between a supported hedgerow system and a, a two-wire system, okay? All right, the next thing I'm going to do is any, any of these fruiting laterals that are below the wires, I'm just going to go ahead and remove them. I don't like to have fruit uh, that's hanging down here, easy access for, for critters and things like that. So we've got our cane selected. Again, we've got, we've got one, two, three, four, five nice canes. And of course, anything that sprouts out, these floor canes that have been cut will probably try to sprout out again. So we'll just remove those um, as they come out. All right, so now let's talk about heading back our laterals. Okay, so got a few pieces of the old canes that we took out and notice what we're left with we've got five nice floor canes that are bound within the two wires okay again this is kind of a hybrid between a two wire system and a supported hedgerow system okay so we don't want these laterals too long these are approaching two to three feet what's going to happen the weight of the fruit is going to pull it down um, and that's just going to be a lot of a lot of fruit out here. Okay, again, one of our main purposes, our main objectives, is to limit the amount of fruit that is produced. So we're generally going to cut these back to a length of about a foot. Okay, if it's a more vigorous uh, variety, and especially if we don't have as many of these laterals, we could leave them a little longer, or we could go a little shorter. But a foot or so is typically going to be going to be a pretty good bet. All right, so we're cutting these all back to roughly. A foot long. Get some over here. And it kind of helps to move these around a little bit so you can really see see what you got to work with. Again, these have been tipped back, so they've got good lateral production. It's what we really like to see. And here's my last floor cane right here. Trim its laterals back. And of course, we could also tie these on to get them, uh, get this vine out of the way to support them a little bit better. So what we end up with now is we have five nice, strong floor canes. Don't have a lot of disease. They're pretty well spaced. We've cut our, our laterals back to about a foot long. And so this should give us the perfect balance, uh, a great balance between fruit production, total yield, and fruit size and quality. Okay, also while kind of opening this up to get air movement through and also allowing for next year's prime canes to come out. And so even though this may look a little bit uh, sparse right now, remember that each lateral bud that we see here will produce a, a very short shoot that will produce fruit on it. So we have the potential to produce quite a bit of fruit on this uh, on this Washita vine. Again, the best time to do this is late winter, early spring, just before they wake up. Some commercial growers may apply microbutanil or rally or something like that to just make sure we don't get any fungal growth in these tips. But uh, generally, um, get, it isn't going to be much of a problem. Of course, you can always learn more at aggie-horticulture.tamu. For Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, I'm Tim Hartman.